ECAV Stadium on the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York. It's a top five Liberty League matchup between the RPI Engineers and the RIT Tigers. It's a winter wonderland here in our own version of March Madness. Snowy and icy conditions here in Troy, New York, and we'll see how that affects the play. Both teams coming in undefeated to the season. The Engineers 9-0 overall, 1-0 in conference, with ranked wins over number 11 York College to open the season, followed by a big win coming from behind over number 6 Middlebury, and wins over number 20 Williams on Wednesday afternoon. RIT 8-0 overall with ranked wins over number 17 York College and avenged an NCAA semifinal loss to the Tufts University Jumbo was then ranked number 3 at the time. Engineers off to a 1-0 start in conference play after defeating Vassar on March 16th and this will be the first Liberty League matchup for the RIT Tigers. RIT coming in as number 2 in the country, the Engineers at number 5 in this evening's matchup. Key starters here for the teams, RPI's Luke Murphy, currently 11th in the country with 47 points and 9th in goals with 33. For the Tigers, Clifford Gatson paces their offense, ranked 23rd in Division Three with 41 points and 18th in goals with 30. Join us as we get our starters set in net for the Tigers. Alex Zeborowski, the sophomore netminder out of Toronto, Ontario, will square off against Joe Perry, the junior from Barrington, Rhode Island. Join us for our high-powered offense here as both teams averaging double digits goals. RIT top in the country with 17.38 goals per game. That's 139 in eight contests. And the Engineers averaging 15.89 goals per game with 143 in nine games. So two high-powered offenses. RIT j tending to be hot out of the gate. They are outscoring their opponents 78 to 37 and very prolific in the first quarter, while the Engineers have shown extra firepower power in the second half tending to outscore their opponents 78 to 43, especially in that third quarter. So keys to the matchup today, RIT looking to lean on their age and experience. They have 28 grads or seniors on the team leading the way for them. Young in net, Zeborowski, no games played last year, but beat out returner Kyle Burbank for the starting job this year. And obviously a prolific offense as we get squared off at center field for today's matchup. Speaking of inhospitable conditions, last time the RIT Tigers were in town was their last Liberty League loss in the regular season. The Engineers defeated the Tigers on home turf in 2022. That was their last win over RIT by a score of 13 to 12. Joe Perry had 23 saves in that victory and leading attacker Luke Murphy contributed two goals in the win. So a lot of drama surrounding this game. Engineers looking to avenge last year's loss on April 1st by a score of 14 to seven up in Rochester. And RIT looking to avenge their last trip to Troy, New York. Icy conditions on the field, cold one out there and some drizzle coming down. So thanks to all of our fans braving the elements out there in what we've come to expect as a snow, excuse me, a spring season. We're ready for our starting face off. Angelo Venuto will square off against Alan French for the Tigers. Venuto wins the scoop, and the Engineers are looking to possess the ball in the attacking end. Loose ball situation scooped up by the Tigers. That was number 20, Mike Grace, a leading defender on their team. And you have to think that these icy, snowy conditions are going to factor in somehow, whether that's losing you know, potentially the, the foot control on the turf, whether that's bounce passes as the pockets get deeper, affecting potentially uh, throwing and catching motions. So we'll have to see how these playing field conditions affect it. But big shout out to the RPI grounds crew and facility staff for getting this field plowed off and ready to play on when a few hours ago it was under ice and slush. 48 seconds to go for the Tigers here and a shot whistles wide of Joe Perry. RIT high shooting percentage. They're averaging about 38.6% on the season. So they will not hesitate to let a shot go and extremely accurate and patient utilizing that full shot clock and making the most of their scoring chances on the season. Balls at X as the Tigers work with 23 seconds to go on their shot clock and now they'll have to look to 
push the attack. It's number 12, Caden Brunson, looking to drive in his left hand. Tigers patient. RPI defense collapsing. You can see high pressure there by Sean Smith on the defensive end. And an opening save that looks like it will pass, excuse me, possession to the RPI engineers. So first defense, a strong one as the engineers get a stop and a change of possession in their first defensive set. You can see the RIT Tigers running the 10-man uh, ride, excuse me, goalkeeper out of the cage as the engineers get to the half field mark. And now Zebrowski will look to return to the net and the engineers look to set up their offense. But major pressure coming from number 48, Alex Axel Sanderson on the defensive end there. Some great size in the RIT back end. Known for their physicality. As a shot and a goal! And RPI is on the board first. Eli Cockstein accepted that pass in his right hand and zipped a shot past Zuborowski to get the RPI engineers going one to nothing with 12.54 in our first quarter. And you have to be opportunistic on offense. We talked about how the RIT Tigers are hot out of the gate. Don't waste any chance getting shots on net. And the engineers obviously aware of that in their scouting report as we see a violation on Venuto. And RIT will gain possession of the draw. But anytime you can get that ball into the middle of the field and get a good angle on the shot, it's always worth letting loose. And a howitzer there by Cockstein zips past Zborowski, the sophomore netminder. All right, T with 88 assists on the season. So a high powered ball movement in their offense, looking to find cutters. Gotta think the engineers are aware and head on a swivel in their defensive end as the Tigers take the ball to goal line extended and swing it around with 47 seconds on their shot clock. Feed in, rolls left. Good check and a ball in on the crease and a save by Joe Perry. That was Jonathan Musrall right on the crease in tight quarters with Perry. And he makes a save and gets to the ball out of bounds to put the ball back in our RPI hands. Engineers patient on their clear, not forcing any quick outlets. Trying to force the RIT engineers all the way down the field and then finding those gaps behind the initial line of defense. And the engineers are into their attacking half. So two first defensive sets and two first stops for the engineers. If you're coach Scott Hack with Daglis, you have to be happy with that beginning to not only not, up, not only give up a goal, but eliminate any high threat scoring chances in their first two defensive sets against one of the more prolific offenses in the country. You have to think too, in our goaltending matchup, we see great experience in the back end with Joseph Perry, a three-year starter here for the engineers and a two-time USILA All-American honorable mention, whereas Zebrowski, a young netminder, as a shot comes in there just wide and recovering are the engineers. And they'll test Zebrowski again. He saves high to high on the crease roll. But you have to think against young netminders like that without the depth and breadth of experience. You want to put them under pressure early, as you saw by Cockstein's shot on the first goal, and make them make saves. Get them uncomfortable. Don't allow them to settle into a rhythm and gain confidence on early stops. RIT brings on the rest of their attack and holds on the perimeter, dictating the pace of play here on the offense on a snowy field in ECAV Stadium. You have to wonder as well if any of those bounce shots are going to provide tricky bounces. And a great check there. Ball comes loose. No threat recovered by the Tigers. You wonder if any of those bounces are going to be harder to read or perhaps more erratic for our goaltenders. As another check and a ball comes loose, caused turnover by the RPI defense. Three defensive sets, three stops. And RPI is out to a hot start there on their defensive half. Looks like that was Jake Erickson on the turnover caused by Will McGrath as the engineers throw a ball away in transition and RIT looks to press their numbers down the field. Feed comes in, that's number seven. And he hits the pipe! 
Shot clock resets. A whistling shot by Jake Erickson looking to avenge that turnover on the last play. Ground ball scooped up by RPI. Luke Murphy, reigning offensive player of the week, not afraid to get down and dirty and pick up a ground ball for his team. We talked about the importance of doing the dirty work, especially on the defensive side. Ty Stanek had a big game against Williams on Wednesday, laying some physical hits and causing some turnovers, which is always critical as a big piece of defense is the willingness to be physical, take away time and space, and occupy that mental intimidation space in an attacker's head as the engineers look to crank up a dodge. That's Cooper Roman rolling back and dishing off to Sean Smith, who says, you take it. And Roman unleashes a shot, looked like it hit Zebrowski. Engineers not able to get to that ball first as RAT defenders were able to close and RAT looks to clear. RAT, a highly efficient clear team at 87% entering this game. So not a team that throws a ball away in transition. They tend to take care of it and generally enter their attacking end successfully. So I'm sure something that the engineers are aware of coming into this game and looking to dis disrupt. Tigers with the ball. No daylight there given from the RPI defense. They'll elect to throw it out and reset from the perimeter. You can see a lot of motion on the RIT attack, looking to come and set picks. As balls at X now, looking for feeders. We talked about those 88 assists on the season, but the engineers playing tight man-on-man -man defense, pressing out and not allowing much daylight for a team that likes to run those little feeds in tight. Great pressure there as RIT looks to roll the crease. Shot in and a jumping save by Perry. And another save in tight. Perry with a quick reaction save on a ball thrown on net. And now he's out with the ground ball. Perry running, trying to escape a jump check from the RIT ride. And RIT all over the ball. Now Perry's out of the cage. They're looking to shoot. We have a player back there. And a goal from distance by number six, Luke Pilcher. Pilcher able to get possession of that ball off the wrap check and shoot on a virtually uncontested net, although an RPI defender was valiantly trying to make a save back there. We'll see the replay here as Perry turned the ball over on a check play, came loose from his stick, and RIT able to capitalize. We have a tie game one to one with seven minutes and 13 seconds remaining. One of the double-edged swords of being a lacrosse goaltender, you have to be active outside your cage, able to cause turnovers, run interceptions, get ground balls, but of course the potential flip side of that is a turnover ending up in the back of your net while your goaltender is in a vulnerable position. So excellent effort there by Joe Perry, great effort on the ride by RIT to stay with that and redefend. And then the Tigers showing that opportunistic offense, able to hit the weak side and put a ball on net quickly. And it's one to one. RPI wins the ensuing draw control and are off in their attacking end. Shot high and wide of the cage. Looked to be by number 30, Zach Swanson. And you can see the engineers are wasting little time putting shots towards Zebrowski and really looking to try to test him from distance early. Not worried so much about getting in tight, but utilizing that quick movement on the perimeter. And anytime they find daylight, a shot as a skip pass comes across. And in the net by Anthony Masella. I believe the feed was from Tyler Ruffini on goal line extended. Ruffini able to run a skip pass across the middle of the zone. And a quick lock and load shot by Masella. As you see him roll back to the right and tuck it under the off stick side. A great shot in lacrosse. On Zygorowski, you can see the RIT defense even thought maybe that was a wide shot. But excellent placement and a quick release by the engineers attack. And you have to like their ball movement and aggressiveness to goal. Not wasting any time here to take a two to one lead. As a shot is deflected. And it's a two to one lead with six minutes and 15 seconds remaining in our first quarter. Alan French was able to control that draw in the ongoing battle with Venuto at the faceoff dot. 
as RIT will again look to control the tempo. So RIT hasn't necessarily scored out of any of their attacking sets thus far in the first 10 minutes of this first quarter. They scored off of a turnover in transition, but haven't yet been able to generate much out of their offensive possessions. I'm sure something that legendary coach will look to change. And we'll talk about him very closely there as a quick save in tight and a reset on the shot clock. That's Jake Kuhn in his 15th season coaching the Tigers, stopped by the engineers and another turnover by RIT. He's brought the program to national prominence. They have two national titles, 2021 and 2022, and are in the midst of a 13-year consecutive NCAA tournament appearance streak, one that I'm sure the engineers will look to hope to disrupt because you have to think any hope of, as a ball towards net from Perry, saved by the RIT defense. RIT out on that 10-man ride and the goaltender out of the net. So Perry elects to take it for a long shot, but there's a flag down. And we will look to see who the guilty party will be. Looks as though the engineers will have the man up advantage. Or perhaps not. Yes, man up advantage for the engineers. RPI had only 12% conversion rate on man-up opportunities on the season, something they'll look to improve upon here and try to extend this lead to 3-1. to one. Engineers looking around the perimeter. Feed comes in and a check on number seven, Cooper Manzi, as he was lefty up in the side of the defense, but turnover by the engineers. RIT would clear and look to kill off the remainder of this penalty. RIT wisely holding the ball, waiting until their number disadvantage has ended. In no hurry thus far to attack. It's Caden Perry who will hand off to the attacking set. John Moserall jumps on, and the Tigers complete their change and are back to even strength. Quiet day thus far for Clifford Gaston, leading scorer for the RIT Tigers. And quiet day thus far for the offense, stymied so far in this first quarter by a stout RPI defense. In come the Tigers, goal line extended, feed in, and a turnover. Ball's on the ground, melee ensues, and the Tigers are able to recover. But a good check and a high hit from RIT. Shot comes in, Joe Perry makes the save, but would have been discredited regardless because of a high hit there by the Tigers. Looked like that was 29 John Moserall on the hit. Came in gloves up on a vulnerable RPI player. Excuse me, not John Moserall, but an RIT Tiger will serve that penalty. And RPI will go right back to the man advantage. So we just talked about how critical those opportunities are when you have the extra attacker, not just for a goal, but a scoring chance. You want to put defenses under pressure. You want to put a heavy shot total on there. You don't want to waste time. You want to put a team on their heels. And a, a huge opportunity it could be a turning point to grab a more extensive lead and really pour the shots on for the engineers here if they can get something going on this extra attacker. Set. Engineers. Elect to utilize the perimeter and now rotation. As you can see, Mazzella posting up in the middle there. As well as Zach Swanson. Swanson moving, with, switching with Smith. And an attack here as Swanson attacks. Hits a pipe, I believe, or potentially a save. Hard to see from this angle. But a reset on the shot clock to 60 seconds. Engineers recover. And a few seconds remaining on their man advantage. 25 seconds left with the extra attacker. Engineers move it around, shot comes in, low, saved by Zebrowski as Mazzella looked to zip that five hole, but Zebrowski able to drop down and get a piece of it with his stick. Tigers ball, looking to clear man down and kill off the remaining eight seconds on this.
penalty, near turnover, and a check by the engineer sends an RIT stick flying. That was Luke Murphy on the one-handed check. Call by the official, and RIT maintains possession of the ball. Another good RIT clear attempt. Tigers back to even strength and looking to attack. On the right side of the cage, feeds Dodd and a shot hits Joe Perry in the left shoulder. That was 29. John Mazeral with the shot. Perry didn't have to move too much, but there's something to be said for being in the right spot as a goaltender on your line, on your angle, and making the saves look easy when you're where you're supposed to be. So Perry up to six saves so far in the contest, three for his counterpart, Zborowski, as RPI keeps the engineers, excuse me, RPI keeps the Tigers off the board once again in their offensive set. Engineers look to attack. Evan Watley with the ball in his right hand looks to feed in and a turnover as the ball hits the turf. Diving check by the RIT defense. That was Hunter Fitzgibbons laying out for that. And RPI able to collect 24 seconds remaining on the shot clock. The engineers will have to look to go to goal before their shot clock expires. 50 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The engineers ball in their attacking half. 10 seconds in the shot clock. Murphy looks to attack. Murphy dishes off. Shot and a goal! Tyler Rafiti, grip it and rip it. The left-handed snipe off the feed from Luke Murphy and the engineers have extended to a three to one lead late in the first quarter. We talked about the aggressiveness to net, the engineers driving in, creating that space, making it difficult on the RIT defense and then a selfless dish there by Luke Murphy as he gets into the scoring area and a great shot back against the green by Tyler Rafini. Engineers up three to one, 40 seconds left, and Venuto wins the scoop at the midfield. Venuto controls, pursued by French, and RPI will be able to maintain possession of this ball for the remainder of the first quarter if all goes well. Plenty of time on that shot clock, far exceeds the game clock. Engineers will elect to slow it down and look for a last second shot as time expires. And it's a take by Luke Murphy and a save by Zebrowski. We'll have to see if it was a save or perhaps a high shot. Looks like it might have been a high shot as the shot clock has not reset. 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Long shot there, wide of the net by Mazzella. Mazzella looked to unleash one towards Cage and why not? Three seconds left in the first half as dodging from X was number 15, Eric Auger, and Auger fires a shot wide that will do it for the first quarter of action. RPI engineers enter the break up three to one. We'll have second quarter action for you in just a few moments.
Welcome back to EKEV Stadium on the campus of RPI in Troy, New York, to our snowy March Madness Day. The top five matchup between the number five RPI engineers and the number two RIT Tigers, the battle of the acronyms in Liberty, Liberty League conference action. RPI off to a three to one lead entering our second quarter and a very quiet afternoon thus far for leading scorer Clifford Gaston of the RIT Tigers. Two shots for Gaston in the first quarter, but no goals. And the RPI defense looking strong in the first 15 minutes of this contest. We're back with our face-off battle between Angelo Venuto and Alan French as Venuto drops on the ball. And the RPI sideline wants a call, and it will go to the Tigers. Some unhappy staffs on the sideline there for the engineers, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Field conditions looking pretty playable, seeming to clear out a little bit more as we get going in this game. We talked about the winter storm warning, some icy, slick snow conditions, and then some driving rain. So not affecting, for sure, the spirit of this game as RIT unleashes, unleashes a shot wide that they're able to recover. 62 seconds on the shot clock remaining, and RIT with the first possession in their attacking set of this second quarter. Joe Perry showing his experience in net. 12 saves thus far. Excuse me, six saves on, on uh, 12 shots. The other half being wide in that first quarter. And the defense again swarming, and it's a pickup by number 48, Ty Stanek. We talked about his importance on the defensive end last game. As a big check there laid in the midfield, and RIT able to recover, and they take it to goal. Shot low, score! RIT on the board. We talked about Clifford Gaston. One of the leading scorers and a massive piece of the RIT offense. And off of another turnover in transition, this time with goalkeeper Joe Perry in the net for the engineers, RIT able to capitalize. As you see Gaston come in, crank up that shot, and then just fool Perry there on the five-hole shot off of the transition. So the Tigers have cut the lead down to one. Three to two is our score with 14.05 remaining in the second quarter. We talked about how prolific the Tigers are in their clear six for six in that first quarter. Engineers four of five, four of six, excuse me, as you can see it there, and two costly ones at that. As a big check and covered on the ground ball, that was number 12, Luke Murphy, once again getting down and getting his team possession. Eric Auger monitoring the pace here as they get the rest of their attack middies on for the engineers. Smith cranks up a dodge. You notice his speed and quickness last game, especially able to create those quick shooting lanes with his footwork, praised by his teammates for his hard work in the weight room as a shot there saved by Zebrowski. High to high shot he was able to see. And a long outlet, confusion at the midfield as the ball pops out of a tiger stick. And now it's the engineers recovering. That's where Feeney able to get to that loose ball. And an 80-second shot clock will be set for the engineers because the pickup was on the other half of midfield. Rafini to goal line extended, back to X. Ball high in the perimeter as the engineers in white uniforms out there. I wonder as well if any of these white background with the snow can affect sometimes the ball, but the engineers playing with a, an orange ball today, which will help for sight lines, as you can see. As a big check and a turnover there by the RPI offense, Tigers look to clear. Perry back in net, nine-man ride for the Engineers. So electing not to press out. And the Tigers are able to gain midfield, but not without heavy pressure. And a double team coming from the long stick middies of the RPI engineers. Ball coming to net and knocked loose by another long stick midi. Looks to be number 37, Caleb Oswari. We saw him pot a few goals last game with that long stick on the rush. Oswari laid a good check, but the Tigers able to recollect. And you can see kind of a tale of two quarters here. RIT out to a hot start and looking to capitalize and close the gap with RPI. On the right side, the back of the net, 
Ball jostled free and trying to keep it in, but failing to. Number 17, Chase Bruno, the sophomore out of Wilmette, Illinois. Just can't quite hold on to that one with, again, RPI defense. And what a leaping catch. Very athletic play by Sean Smith, a one-handed grab to haul in a high pass. We talked about how the wet conditions, you know, can, can potentially affect not only the footing of these players. as a long outlet shot by Joe Perry, intercepted by an RIT defender. Uh, but you wonder if, as well, as the pockets get deeper and potentially stickier in wet conditions, you could see some errant passes. Shot tipped wide. I believe it went off of number 37, Caleb Oswari. Recovered by RIT. Uh, so we've seen a few of those errant passes in transition. And we'll have to keep an eye on those conditions as we keep moving through. Timeout by the Tigers as they look to settle things down and get into their attacking right. set. Tigers with a goal in each quarter thus far. And they have to be happy with how they've started this second qu quarter compared with the, the first quarter there where the RPI engineers were able to get a few stops and then generate some quick shots from distance for goals. So we will reset after this timeout and be back with you shortly. Back with second quarter action here. 11.06 remaining, and RIT with full possession of the ball and 71 seconds on their shot clock in this offensive set. So leading the R RPI engineers, Tyler Ruffini with two points on the day, goal and an assist. And quiet thus far is Luke Murphy, the RPI's leading scorer and one of the more prolific offensive players in the country. Quiet as well until he buried the last goal for the Tigers was Clifford Gaston. RIT with the ball, looking to crank a dodge from far out. Pick there, and a pass off, and a save, or a wide shot, but coming off his angle aggressively was RPI goalkeeper Joe Perry. Tigers looking to attack off of that pick, and then a quick lateral pass, but not much net to shoot at, and the ball was just wide right of Perry. 40 seconds in the shot clock for Tigers in their possession here. RIT looks to possess on the perimeter. And a loose ball now. RPI defense closing. That's 24, Dante Parasoto on the pickup. As Parasoto pushes the ball in transition. Numbers, he has a key, he has a lane to net, takes it, and a high bounce shot. Goes over the net, but a great pickup there in defensive effort by Dante Parasoto. RIT looks just a little uncomfortable, a little hesitant in that quick pass. And you have to think the RPI defense has done an excellent job of disrupting the flow of that RIT offense, perhaps making them look for some different options and opportunities than they're normally comfortable seeking. And the engineers engineering a strong defensive set here thus far in the first half of this game. Cooper Manzi rolls to his left hand, takes the ball to X, and is pursued by a short stick midi on the Tigers' defense. And he'll pull the ball out, wait for a pick from Luke Murphy, and look to attack left-handed. Manzi rips a shot high. That goes behind the net. Looks like the shot clock will remain at 33 seconds. No reset there. So a wide shot by Manzi. Luke Murphy will recover 
on the restart. Look to attack in, no space there for him. Dish is high. An RPI with 22 seconds left on the shot clock will look to attack in the waning minutes of their time there. Rolling the crease, Evan Watley elects to come back. And off goal line extended, kicks the ball high. Pass is overthrown and to the midfield as a battle ensues on the 50 yard line and a violation of the restraining line by the engineers will give RIT full possession. RIT pushing down the middle. Lane to net for the long stick defender. That's number 20, Mike Grace, a leading defender on this RIT defense. Big size and power by the six foot five Grace out of Hamilton, Ontario, an area I've recruited in extensively. Shot wide of net, RIT ball. Grace, a key piece of that defense for the RIT Tigers, leading them in cause turnovers, I believe coming into this game with five. And obviously a big physical presence on the backside. 37 ground balls on the season entering this game for Mike Grace, which is again, possession a key statistic in any sport, but especially in this sport. As driving in was number 10, Miles Tillman. Tillman has to pull the ball out as stout defense by Caleb Oswari denied him a lane to the net. <laughs> Off the pick there, that's number seven attacking in and a goal by Jake Erickson, his second of the game. Erickson dodged righty off of that pick and then able to throw a ball back down against the green on Joe Perry, not able to get down and make that save. And we have a tie game with 8.07 remaining in this second quarter. So Tigers on the board as you see that shot from Erickson leading his group here with two goals and uh, three shots on net. So a great shooting percentage for Erickson as we go back to the draw circle. And French wins the scoop and the ground ball, able to maintain possession, takes it to net. Shot saved by Perry. And he's able to recover, almost looked like a goal crease violation. But Perry, quick outlet pass, and the engineers are downfield. But an errant throw puts the ball back in the hands of the RIT Tigers. That's Clifford Gaston holding on to possession, changing the pace and allowing his teammates to come on. Gaston with one goal thus far in the game. And this quarter has been all RAT Tigers. So a tale of two quarters so far in our acronym battle of RPI versus RAT. The engineers out to a hot start and a three to one lead going into the second quarter. RAT outscoring the engineers two to nothing in this quarter and dominating possession as they will look to, once again, you can see them pulling out the RPI defense and attacking and looking to roll. And ball passed wide, just missed the mark by RIT and it'll turn the ball over. But you can see the RIT offense stretching that RPI defense, that man-to-man -man set, really forcing them to spread out and eliminating that ability for help to come and set doubles. So great tactics there and not, expect, not unexpected by Coach Kuhn. Coach Jake Kuhn, the legendary coach in his 15th season at RIT, former netminder for Nazareth College and All-American, trying to make the RPI defense a little bit uncomfortable there in the second quarter. RPI with the ball in the attacking half. Its leading scorer, Luke Murphy, who's been quiet thus far in this game. You have to think he's all over the radar of the RIT defense. Best way to prevent scoring from a great player is to prevent possession. Quick ball movement by the engineers. Look to opening a shooting threat. Ogert looks to attack. Nothing there on his right side. And he takes the ball behind. Quick pick there from Rafini. Rafini feeds in and a quick save by Zebrowski. Can't find the ball and it was hiding on the women's fan. The eight meter arc, I believe, kind of blended in with the orange ball. So we had a handful of players trying to identify where it was. Zebrowski able to find it. And you saw a good stop there on that quick feed in from the engineer's attack. So the engineer is still scoreless in the second quarter as RIT has possession again and looks to spread out the RPI defense. RPI playing a little more conservatively. Entirely to the crease as a save there by Joe Perry. Another jumping save. We saw another low angle shot by the Tigers rolling in 
believe that was another shot by Jake Erickson. Jake Erickson really jumping out for the Tigers this year. Is rolling in uncontested and a dodge by Erickson. Shot again saved by Perry. Off of his stick side. So Erickson dynamic in this first half for the Tigers. Really trying to lead the way on offense. Erickson a six foot one attacker out of Acton, Massachusetts. Looking to create some disruption to the RPI defense. Not afraid to attack, take the ball to goal, and quick release there. But Joe Perry stood tall. You see the quick shot there, the spin dodge, and then the release by Erickson. Ball pops out of play. RIT able to get to it. We'll have another timeout here. Take a brief pause with 519 remaining in our second quarter. Tie ball game, 3-3. Three three. Number five RPI engineers against the number two RIT Tigers in Liberty League action. We'll be right back with you shortly. Credited RIT coach Jake Kuhn with his extensive efforts at the RIT program. Lots of credit as well due to head coach Scott Hackett Daglish of the RPI Engineers in his six years head coach, leading the team to consistent top 20 rankings and coming off of their best Liberty League record since 2010 after they went 6 and 1 last season, that loss being against RIT. Now we're ready to reset here with rainy conditions and snowy. <laughs> field conditions as well. Little winter storm warning to kick off our spring slate. And 5.15 remaining in the second quarter of a tied game between the RPI engineers and the RIT Tigers. Check from behind creates a turnover there. Loose ball, quick shot off the turnover. Save Perry. Reset on the shot clock. And RIT ball. Perry's been excellent here in this second quarter with lots of pressure from the RIT Tigers. Another save by Perry. And a melee on the crease, looks like a push, and the ball will go back to the Tigers. And the fans are letting the officials have it, as they have some disagreement they'd like to voice. That was John Maserol, the graduate attacker from Pittsburgh, New York, on the crease, trying to stuff one low on Joe Perry, and Perry said no. Jake Erickson again looking to attack in for the Tigers. RPI defense says no. Perry up to 12 saves so far in the contest. As the engineers look to create a turnover and get on the board here in the second quarter. Shot blocked by an RPI defender and picked up by number 37, Caleb Oswari. RIT in pursuit, and a big check in the midfield, and a turnover by number 41, Drew Teff. It was excellent redefending by the Tigers, who laid a heavy check on Teff. Teff actually had time and space, but coming up from that fall, maybe he didn't feel he had the time, and turned the ball over back to RIT. One of the best defenses is good offensive possession, and the Tigers are showing that. As Erickson looks to muscle a ball in, and saved by Perry, but a goal crease violation by Erickson gives the ball back to the Engineers. 3.40 remaining in our second quarter. RPI looking to make something of their attacking set for the first time in this second quarter. They've been held scoreless, but first they'll have to gain the midfield. As Zeborowski tight to the crease there. RIT drops in the ride, and the engineer is able to gain their attacking zone. Go, 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 go. 
So Erickson, we've seen him take balls to net all game long, unafraid using that six foot plus frame to drive balls in and muscle, muscle shots on net, but Perry able to make the save and the goal crease violation on the shot. And the engineers have a chance to put their first goal on net. Shot high to high save and a second quick save by Zebrowski off the rebound. Might have zipped wide of the cage. But a quick series there for Zebrowski, who's been solid in the second quarter for RIT. Engineers had a fresh shot clock to work with, down to 44 seconds. Rolling in is Masala. Masala, excuse me. Ball up top to Rafini. Rafini in his left hand. Pass nearly high, as we talked about potential implications of the wet weather and how that can affect the sticks. Dodge there and attacking in was Luke Murphy. Nearly a Superman dive cranked up as Murphy put the stick all the way in his left hand and whipped it back, no look with his back to the cage. Just wide, 18 seconds remaining on the shot clock in one of RPI's longer offensive possessions in the second quarter. As we'll have a reset on the shot clock, so they're saying a save by Zebrowski gives RPI a fresh 60 seconds to work with and no hurry in this tied game with two minutes remaining before the halftime. And a high ball not able to be corralled by Zach Swanson. Sean Smith throws it out of bounds. And an unforced error by the Engineers gives the RIT Tigers possession with just under two minutes remaining. And not what you want to see if you're Coach Scott Hackle daglish and you have the momentum and a possession in the offensive end and are in desperate need of, of a goal and to keep the RIT offense off the field. But great pressure here by the RPI defense. Looks like a held check but no whistles here and play on for the Tigers as they will stall with a minute and 30 remaining and 53 seconds on their shot clock to get their offensive middies on the field. Wide attack here as RIT looks to pull out the RPI defense. Pick coming by number six, Luke Pilcher on the on the perimeter and a shot save. Looked like it went off the left knee of Joe Perry as he shakes that one off. That's gotta hurt on a day like today. As a goaltender myself, I know that feeling when you get a lacrosse ball on a cold day off the shin. It doesn't feel good on a warm day either, but certainly a little more bone chilling when it's damp and cold like this. Under a minute here in our second quarter. End of the first half, 47 seconds on the shot clock. RIT in no hurry. They'll look to wind this clock down and attack late in the half. Perhaps a last second shot, see if they can't get a goal and keep the RPI attack off the field in the waning minutes of this first half. Well, it's been a real defensive battle. We've seen the goaltenders dueling. We've seen the defenders attacking uh, with an excellent job closing and playing physically, picking up ground balls. It's been an, uh, an entertaining game by two high-powered offense. Saved by Perry. And the ball will go into the hands of the RPI engineers as it just barely gets out of bounds. Interesting call by the official there. I think the engineers felt their defender was closer to the ball. Six seconds remaining in the half. Ball in the RIT hands. Great check from behind by number 48 on the engineer squad, Ty Stanek. I believe that was Seth Grottenhaller rolling back to his right hand and was just in the release motion of his shot, hung the stick just a little bit, and Stanek with a potentially game-saving check there to keep RIT off the board again. But the damage has been done. The RIT Tigers, two goals in the second quarter, as we'll see that save by, excuse me, goal by um, Mazzella. The last time the engineers have scored was in that first quarter. So RPI, a hot team in the second half, generally come out outscoring teams in the third quarter. We'll see if they can do it again here as we head into our halftime with a 3-3 tie in an excellent game of top five Liberty League opponents, RIT and RPI. Stay tuned for us. We'll see you back here for second half action.
Welcome back to ECAF Stadium at RPI in Troy, New York. We have an exciting second half for you. Entering this third quarter with a tie game, RPI Engineers 3, RIT Tigers 3 in our top five matchup of Liberty League opponents. Some second half statistics for you as we enter in after the end of the first half. Tyler Ruffini pacing the Engineers with a goal and an assist, two points. Luke Murphy adding an assist and three shots. And then on the RIT side, Jake Erickson driving the offense for the Tigers with a goal and an assist on eight shots and adding three ground balls. The goaltenders have been fantastic. Zebrowski with seven saves for the Tigers, allowing only three goals. His counterpart, RPI Joe Perry, with 15 saves. His season high is 19, so we'll keep an eye on that as we roll through, allowing only three goals against. We're off and running with the third quarter as French is able to get the better of Venuto, but Venuto may have the last laugh. Great check there as he pursues the ball, French able to recover. Long outlet to the weak side of the field as the Tigers complete their change. And RIT came storming back in the second quarter of last half, outscoring the Engineers 2-0, not allowing a goal. Big piece of that was Zebrowski with his work in the goal crease but the Tigers relentless and able to create some turnovers there. We talked about that highly successful RIT breakout, not typically giving balls away in transition, and that's been a big piece of their ability to take the ball from their defensive end and successfully get set up in their attacking zone. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Tigers looking to attack long shot. Save high to high. That was number 12, Caden Brunson unleashing a riser on Joe Perry, but Perry equal to the task. And the engineers are back with their first possession 
of the second half, looking to break their scoreless streak here. They haven't been on the board since the first quarter. We talked about how the engineers are hot in the third quarters, tending to outscore their opponents by a fairly large margin. We'll see if they can do that again here today. That's 78 to 43 in second halves, but especially in those third quarters. Engineers known for a few of their comeback wins this year, and on Wednesday we saw them take down number 20, Williams College of the Nescac, as a shot saved there by Zebrowski. Not much on it by the RPI attacker. Looks to be Rafini. The engineers were able to pull away and hold Williams scoreless until the closing minutes of the half when the Geeks were able to put two goals in, but a big halftime energy from the engineers. But RIT looking to stifle that as they are attacking right off their set here. Low angle shot and a goal. That was RIT leading scorer Clifford Gaston with a low angle shot from goal line extended, had the stick in his right hand. As we'll see the replay here, able to fed on the crease. And then a low to high shot. We'll have to see where that snuck through on Joe Perry. Looked like it snuck through just on his right side. And a tricky shot there with eyes from Clifford Gaston. No surprise why that's his 43rd point of the season. Prolific score for the Tigers. And a nose for the net as Venuto able to get to the ground ball first, but a great check by French. And RIT has possession of the ball. Benito hung his stick a little bit. French in pursuit. Tigers ball as they look to attack. Long shot and saved by Perry. That was the long stick midi Axel Sanderson. Quite a name there from New Westminster, British Columbia. Long way from home. Axel tried the long shot five hole, but Perry able to get down as a bobbled ball in transition by Drew Teff, recovered by Teff. So RIT up four to three. They've taken their first lead of the game and a very even matchup as we saw coming in, the stats playing that out, but RIT dominating possession as a ball across, shot just wide of the cage on a quick release by Cooper Roman. So RPI is still about 17 minutes straight, haven't scored since the first half and looking to get back on the board and even things up here with their offensive possession. Looking to create space and attack in, double team coming, and ball bobbled a little bit off the pass by Roman. Sean Smith, lefty up, looking to attack in under heavy pressure up top. And you can see how the RIT defense is ready with the slide and able to collapse with that double team. Not a lot of daylight on those drives. See how the engineers look to attack and create offense. Long shot sneaks in. Looked like it kicked off the post. That was Rafini unleashing a left-handed shot on the move. Tricky release there. Looked like Zebrowski got rolling with it and I wonder if we'll see it on the replay here. The ball looked to skid potentially back against the green and then off the inside of the pipe. So you see Rafini here just a great release to get that ball down on the turf and then it kicked right up and the spin took it off the inside of the pipe and in. Just an excellent shot there by Rafini. Really nice release and just caught Zebrowski leaning as Venuto wins the draw against French. Great pick up there by Venuto. He's able to corral that one and protect it. RPI possession. Faceoffs very even in this one. Six for 11 are the engineers, five for 11 are the Tigers. Turnovers favoring the Tigers as the engineers have 13, and that's been the difference in the second quarter and here into the third quarter are those turnovers on unforced errors or on checked sticks. The RIT Tigers have seven caused turnovers in the game as a shot there whistles wide of Zebrowski. 47 seconds on the shot clock for the engineers who will tromp through some icy snow to pick up that wide ball. Again, a lot of credit to our grounds crew and facility staff here at RPI for getting this field ready to play. Had to delay the game about an hour to finish up that maintenance, but great appreciation for their hard work in tough circumstances, as always, in spring seasons that look sometimes like winter seasons. Engineers with the ball, 25 seconds in the shot clock. Tie game four to four as the engineers finally get back on the board. Pass pops out of the stick of Evan Watley. 
And Zebrowski clamps down on that and says, that is mine. Tigers with the ball off of a bobbled turnover. And a large room to walk it up the field it was Tanner Winkleman, who was able to gain essentially 30 yards and find his teammate Luke Pilcher in the offensive zone wide open. Engineers break, defense broken, almost there by Clifford Gatson showing his speed from the sideline. He was just able to backdoor cut his man on the RPI defense as the ball's turned over into the engineer stick. Gatson ran that little backdoor cut and was busting to net, nearly got a ball with a breakaway from a low angle on Perry, but a collapse by the defense and RPI has the ball. Tie game, 4-4, 9-23 remaining in this third quarter action as we're in the second half of a low scoring affair from two high powered offenses. Another feed in turned over by the engineers. RIT looks to push their numbers in transition. Out ahead, ball in Caden Brunson's hands. Brunson has to pull out, great drop, uh, drop by the engineers to protect the middle, stop the ball and force the Tigers to pull it out. Coming in, RIT attack midi, Seth Grottenhall. And a shot, save, goes wide. RIT recollects the ball. Cranking up a dodge. It's number 24, Ian Dinga. Dinga has to peel off and will elect to hold on the perimeter. Dinga hits the left, the right pipe, excuse me, <clears throat> on a low angle shot. Second shot looked to clip wide, popped in the air and out of bounds. Joe Perry in a race with Mazral. Mazral able to get to the ball first, and that will stay RIT possession with a reset shot clock. So it must have been saved by Perry on that shot. And again, the players utilizing the orange ball due to today's field and visibility conditions making it a little bit easier to see except for the time where Zebrowski lost that ball on the women's arc but able to recover as we'll have a reset from our officials that's Masral with the ball on a low angle he rolls in and a shot just squeaks past Joe Perry and Perry, unhappy, feels like there was an interference of some sort. We'll have to look at it on the replay, but Masrell came ripping in on his right hand and unleashed that shot mid-stride. And Perry got a piece of it, but just kicked underneath him, as we'll take a look again on that quick shot. I think Perry thinking there was potentially some sort of an interference or a crease violation. But a good goal, and RIT regains the lead 5-4 to four with 8.05 remaining in our third quarter. RIT once again outscoring the Engineers. They're up 2-1 to one in this quarter as French gets the draw control, takes it right to net, and Joe Perry says no. Perry up to 17 saves on the day, his season high 19, and recorded 23 saves against RIT in the win last time the Engineers defeated them here at ECAP Stadium. And that's all held check by the RIT Tigers. Pass in and a goal! Caleb Oswari. The flag was thrown. The ball possessed. And the feed in. Great poise there by the engineers to maintain their cool and find the outlet as Oswari on the board again in today's game with the long pole. Sometimes a tricky release to read for our, the goaltenders, especially when you can get right down the middle in that scoring alley. And Oswari just buries the chance to tie it. We are back to an even game, 5-5 five to five with 7.39 remaining in our third quarter. Ground ball as French and Venuto do battle again at the midfield, picked up by the Tigers. Long stick midi Hunter Fitzgibbons look to be in on the play, the senior out of Trumbull, Connecticut. Ball possessed by the Tigers. Rolling in 
the ever dangerous Clifford Gaston. 43 points on the season for Gaston. Leading scorer for the Tigers. Little give and go in as Perry makes another save. That was Jake Erickson who's been threatening all game long. Little give and go on the perimeter and tried to throw it from goal line extended. But a low angle, Perry doing his job. And ball back in the RPI hands. We've seen an excellent goaltending and real keen defensive matchup in a game featuring a couple high-powered attackers as Perry whips an outlet that the officials believe was a pass. He might want to argue it's a shot, but for all intents and purposes, the ball will be back in RIT hands. And they'll ride against. We talked about how important that clear percentage was for RIT. They're 13 of 14 in this game. The engineer is only 12 of 17. And I think that's a big piece of why they haven't been able to maintain sustained offensive pressure is those turnovers in the transition as RIT pushes the pace to goal. Long shot and a goal, low and away. Number 24, G TJ, Hen excuse me, Ian Dinga, the senior out of Bristow, Virginia, with a snipe on the rush, as we'll see it here, wasting little time into his attacking zone. Oh, the sideline liked it. Has that ball in his outside hand as a lefty protecting it and then just zipping it in the bottom right corner. Well placed shot there by Dinga and the RIT Tigers are back up in our ping pong lead match, six to five with 618 remaining. So trading leads once again as Venuto scoops up the ball in transition. Dishes off to the long stick midi. That was number 32, Robbie McDonald the first year out of Topsfield, Massachusetts. Ball recollected by RPI and looking for another shot there was Oswari. He said, I have one, why not try for another? No harm, no foul, might as well take it. 63 seconds to play with on the shot clock after the 80 second start from the midfield. So not a bad look by Oswari to threaten. And you can see the engineers obviously have shot volume in mind today as one of their offensive tactics. Cranking up a dodge there is Smith. Comes to his left and scores! And Smith gets the crowd pumped up who is weathering the weather here at ECAV Stadium. Talked about Smith's quickness and footwork and you see the coordination there to get that shot not only off but zip it cross body as he rolls to his left and finds the alley through the defense. As you can see, several RIT defenders uses him almost as a screen. That was number 38, Hunter Fitzgibbons coming out on the ball. And Smith says, thank you, I will shoot it against the green off your left hip. And a great shot there by Sean Smith. And we are tied again at six to six. It's been a battle of leads, giving up leads, and coming from behind as Venuto loses his helmet on the face off. Don't see that tremendously often. Six to six is our score with 5.36 remaining in the third quarter. Possession will go to RIT. On the violation on the face off. So Perry up to 19 saves. He's matched his season high thus far after the comeback win over Middlebury where he posted 19. Dead even in ground balls today with 25 to 25. So a lot of the, the statistics playing out exactly as the score would. RIT with the slight advantage in shots here with 37, and you can see Perry making up the difference with his saves. RPI with 26, and Zebrowski no slouch in net himself, the sophomore netminder, with eight saves, and they've been timely ones. So the volume not quite as much as Perry's seeing, but he's been there when they've needed him, especially in that scoreless second quarter for the engineers. Driving his way in was Erickson. We see him using his body from X to attack on those crease rolls. Shoots just wide. Erickson entered this game with 35 points himself, 18 goals, 17 assists. Second on the team in scoring, so obviously on that RPI pre-scout, as I believe a ward is called on Erickson, or perhaps on the screen, hard to tell. And the violation would give the ball back to the engineers who successfully gain their attacking half. Eli Coxstein looking to push the pace. Coxstein on the board today after his quick transition goal early in the first quarter. 
ground ball recovered by RIT. And they're able to get it out of harm's way into their attacking half. Numbers in transition, long shot. Oh, and that comes off an RPI defender. Recovered on the rebound. Pinballed over to Perry. As it kicked off an RPI defender and then off an RIT player. And Perry able to scoop it up. Patient ride for the Tigers who dropped to midfield. Zabrowski in net and a lobbed pass picked off by number 20, Mike Grace. The leading cause turnover defender on the Tigers. Big save by Perry on the rising shot. He's up to 20 saves so far in this one. Engineers need a successful clear here. As we have a whistle on the play. And it'll be RPI ball in the midfield. So we talked about those clears. RPI only 14 of 20 on their clears today. RIT 15 of 16. So those bobbled balls in transition, those lob passes to stagnant attackers usually lead to turnovers. And that's caught the RPI engineers a few times today. I'm sure something they'll look to clean up as they finish up this third quarter and head into the fourth quarter, quarter in this tight game where possession and turnovers always seem to make the difference. But engineers looking to be opportunistic, drive and a goal. Went off the pipe and fooled I think a lot of players including the officials, but a slip goal there and we'll see the replay. But a great take to net from X. As you can see driving in there was Cooper Manzi. Rolls back to his right hand, creates that space, gets the defender up the line, protects it, and then just sneaks it inside the post. What a, what a slippery play by Cooper Manzi. And the engineers are back in the lead. Seven to six with 3.09 remaining in this third quarter. Venuto, another draw control. Clean possession for him as he gets the better of French in their ongoing tête-à-tête. -tete. Engineers look to control the pace, slow it down, complete their changes. RIT will bring on their defensive middies as well. Rolling to his left and hitting X, Zach Swanson. As Ojert comes on his right hand and kicks it back up top to leading scorer Luke Murphy. Murphy dishes off to the crease. And is it inside or outside? I think he was even fooled. Ruffini, Tyler Ruffini from Luke Murphy, a winning combination. They could find each other all over the field. And an excellent finish there to sneak it past Dibrowski. Take a look at that again. Murphy dishes off to Ruffini. We'll have to see where that ball slipped in. Looks like it went just under the right arm of Zibrowski and the engineers are up on with a two goal lead on RIT 8-6. We talked about how they can come out and outscore teams and bring the energy in that third quarter. The sideline, a big piece of that. They're known for their energy and enthusiasm for the subs. It's trying to stay warm and dry today, but bringing excellent, excellent jump to their teammates. And as we've seen the engineers thus far outscoring RIT 5-3 in this third quarter. And another draw control will go to the engineers as the faceoff violation on French puts the ball back in RPI hands. Feed into Metzella. He takes the ball behind Ogert. Ogert had a big game against Williams on Wednesday, a little bit quieter here today. As rolling and firing a low shot that's saved is Luke Murphy. Zebrowski ready for that one as Murphy's fall was falling away a little bit on that release. Some acrobatics by Swanson at the midfield to avoid the offsides violation there. Looked like he was on a tightrope for a, a few seconds, but maintained upright posture and his feet. RIT with possession of 53 seconds to work with on their shot clock, looking to cut the deficit before the end of the quarter. 120 remaining in this third quarter. So after keeping the engineers off the board for the entire second quarter, RPI has stormed back for five goals in their third quarter and has held RPI to three. 
excuse me, RIT to three. Shot and a goal. Caden Brunson, the senior out of Marshall, Wisconsin, with the lefty release off the quick feed. We talked about how the RIT Tigers are high in the country in their assist ratio. And just the little dish, the attack down, and the zip against the grain, and the left-handed shot from Brunson. And RIT back within one of RPI with 102 remaining in the third quarter. We knew it was going to be a tight one. You look at all the statistics, you look at all the different markings of a team, and it was pretty much dead even headed into this game. Two high-powered offenses, um, two strong draw control units. And here we go. RPI up one, 48 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Looking to build a lead heading into the last 15 minutes of the game. Engineers have plenty of time. The shot clock exceeds the game clock. So no rush, they'll look to hold and be content to wait for a last second shot. As pressuring out is Nick, Fer excuse me, is uh, Sean Tierney. Making things uncomfortable for Cooper Manzi. With some high pressure on ball, 16 seconds remaining. Manzi waiting for the clock to hit 10. He starts his dodge with 12. Rolls in on the right, backdoor feet on the crease, picked off, bobbled. In an RIT stick, but a check on the ground. And a long stick, D looked to, looked to send it the length of the field, but was checked. Quick rolling shot on net there. Not threatening and turned aside by Zebrowski. 8-7 is our score, engineers up one. We'll have a two minute break, and then we'll have the final 15 minutes of what's been a thrilling game here. Top five matchup between two exceptional Liberty League opponents in RIT and RPI. We'll be back with third quarter, excuse me, fourth quarter action in the last 15 minutes of this matchup in just a moment. Welcome back to the fourth quarter in our Battle of the Unbeatens, number five RPI against number two RIT. One of these teams will leave with the first blemish on their record, and a one goal difference is all that separates them this evening. Thanks for joining, I'm Tara Connolly, here with you on today's call as we begin the last 15 minutes of the fourth quarter in our action in Liberty League contest today. RIT with the opening face-off draw to this fourth quarter and possession by French, but he is checked and pursued there by the RPI defense. That's leading scorer Clifford Gaston able to come up with possession on that ground ball. He will take it to the wide alley as RIT prepares to attack. Engineers outscored the RIT Tigers five to four in that fourth quarter, excuse me, in that third quarter, something we've seen from them throughout the season. And I'm sure a trend that if they can do that in this quarter will ensure them their first victory over RIT since 2022 when the Tigers were in town. And that was their last Liberty League regular season loss was at the hands of the engineers. So RPI, I'm sure, with several players that were on that team, including Luke Murphy and Joe Perry, looking to, again, deal the RIT Tigers 
their second loss in the Liberty League in a few years. 20 seconds on the shot clock, rolling in. Clifford Gaston, ball checked loose. Ground ball, melee in front of Perry. Perry scoops it up and rolls to the outside of the cage. Long outlet pass and a big time catch on the sideline. That was Eli Kopstein, who has been on the score sheet with a goal in this contest. A really excellent grab by Kopstein. Had to twist back almost like a wide receiver and find the ball. Uh, just a great grab there on the outlet by Perry. And he's able to gain possession for the engineers. We talked about how the clear percentage need to improve. Engineers now 15 for 21 on their exit attempts. And Kopstein, a, a big catch there to give the engineers possession in their attacking zone, something that hasn't been consistent, especially in that second quarter, because of the Tigers' offensive pressure, excuse me, defensive pressure, as well as potentially some of these field conditions. Ball at X, 29 seconds on the shot clock, a long rip from distance, and a call from the officials will send the ball back with RIT. Tigers are 16 of 17 on their clears. Came into the came into the game with about an 89% efficiency rate on those clears, so operating right around their usual status. 12:37 remaining in our fourth quarter in our top five matchup with Liberty League points on the line. Seth Grottenholler, possession of the ball, looking to attack. No space from the RPI defense that has held strong for the majority of this game. Pick on the play by Luke Pilcher and a big hit on an RIT attacker. That was Robbie McDonald showing a physical presence out there. The first year long stick midi from Topsfield, Massachusetts out of Austin Prep. Standing up and we have a conversation among the officials, perhaps to see if a flag was warranted on that, but a solid body check there by McDonald on the attacking RIT Tiger. Flag is down on the field. And McDonald will serve time for that physical hit. Looked like an elbowing was what they called as the Tigers will get a man-up advantage and a reset on the shot clock. And this is a dangerous man-up unit, 66.7% on the season. So a prolific offense that knows how to move the ball and find the open man with the advantage. As you can see them in essentially a box formation with two in the middle, looking to keep those RPA defenders in check. Engineers staying tight in the box as a long shot Whistles wide left of goalkeeper Joe Perry. RIT maintains possession on the shot. 11.45 remaining. RIT looking to tie things up as they are down by one. A position they have not particularly found themselves in yet. They were able to avenge their loss to Tufts by five goal margin uh, in their latest victory over a ranked team. But a close one here with the Engineers as a feed in. Picked up initially by number 18, Will McGrath. But physical play as Joe Perry out of his crease, able to scoop the loose ball. He's able to find a long stick defender on the weak side of the field. And that's Jack Green. And a long try at goal shot from the defensive end by the RPI defense. Figured why not take a look at Cage. That looked to be Ty Stanek. RIT was in the 10-man ride with Zebrowski out of the net. And Stanek figured why not. Oswari's on the board with a long stick goal today. I might as well. Tigers regain possession on that long shot. And the man advantage has dissipated. So we're back to even strength. Tigers with the ball, 53 seconds on their shot clock, and a one goal deficit with 10.32 remaining in our fourth quarter and in the game. Speaking of Stanek, high pressure out from him, evades, evades the 
pick, but a quick shot off the pass. Looks like a one-touch shot, hard to do with a lacrosse stick, especially in rainy conditions like this, where pockets get deeper and stickier. And the release is just a little bit tougher, but a quick one-touch one shot by the RIT Tigers as we see Jake Erickson trying to back in once again on the crease. He's been active on that goal line, extended, taking on one-on-one -on -one and trying to get inside. The ever-dangerous Clifford Gaston with the ball on his stick. Dynamic attacker who's leading this Tigers team in scoring on the season. He dishes off to Evan, excuse me, to John Maserol. And Maserol puts a shot on net and we have a tie ball game. Eighth goal for the RIT Tigers off the stick of Maserol. And we'll take a look at that again as he dodges in off his right hand. Little too much space given there by the defender. Oh, it went to the back door, excuse me. So the assist is to Maserol and another one touch shot much like we saw in the last play. And what a finish there by the Tigers to make that assisted play. We talked about how they were able to find each other and assist on a lot of these goals, not just individual efforts. And what a pass there and what a finish to bat that into the crease on the back door. Not much Perry could do on that one as French scoops it up, takes it to net and a goal. Right off the draw and RIT strikes twice in a quick span to take the lead nine to eight. Last goal scored at 9.51 and then six seconds later, French collects the draw and muscles it through, tucks it just under the crossbar. An exceptional effort there by number 44, Alan French, the face-off specialist out of Drake at Massachusetts. Talked about the leadership of the graduate students and the seniors, 28 of them combined on this RIT roster and French there showing some timely performance for his team to help RIT regain the lead nine to eight. We have another change of lead in this thrilling game as the engineers now have the ball on the attacking end. 9.30 remaining in our game here in Troy as the RPI engineers have possession and will look to go on offense. Sean Smith taking on the RIT defense one-on-one, -on -one, rolls back to his right hand. 42 seconds on the shot clock and no hu hurry here for the engineers. As that's Rafini attacking into the left. Low to high riser shot saved by Zibarowski. And looked like an in and out to so the RIT Tiger on defense with the ball must have stepped into the crease. Ball goes back to the hands of the RPI engineers after the turnover by Fitzgibbons. So a gift there for the engineers after the save by Zebrowski. A fresh shot clock and another look at net for RPI. 8.32 remaining, engineers with the ball. Long shot and a goal by Anthony Mazzella. Sideline erupts and the soggy fans here at ECAF Stadium, not dampened by the weather, spirits are high. We are tied again, nine to nine with 8.29 remaining as we take a look, another look at that Mozilla shot. Just rolls right in, gets a look at Cage and zips it, stick high on Zebrowski. So second of the game for Mozilla and an excellent shot and a timely one there as the engineers are now knotted at nine apiece with the RIT Tigers and 8.29 remaining in the game. Face off won by the Tigers. Going down in the midfield was the draw winner, Axel Sanderson. The slippery conditions and some pressure led to his downfall. So the engineers in white with some mixed flurries and rain coming down in wintry conditions have possession of the ball with 8.07 remaining in a tie game with RAT looking to hand them their second Liberty League loss in the last couple of years. But it will take an exceptional effort to not only cushion that lead, but to maintain it. The goal scorer, the latest goal scorer, Masella with the ball. Kicks the ball to Ogert behind the net. Ogert 
Cranks up a dodge, looks to weasel his way in on the crease, no go. Engineers swing it around back up top to Smith. As you can see, a lot of movement inside by the engineers, a lot of shifting on this attack. And an opening here, almost an opening for Rafini, who lost his man, looked like some confusion on the RIT slide. And the engineers with 13 seconds left, so using the entirety of this shot clock as driving in as Mazzella again. Mazzella shoots it just wide. And Ojert is there to back up, looking for the ball in the snow. Finds it. Eight seconds on the shot clock, so time not of the element for the engineers who need to get a ball on net here. 7.07 remaining in the game. Four seconds on the shot clock, three, two, one, and that's a violation by the Engineers. Ball goes back to the Tigers' hands. Important ride as you see the Engineers dropping and essentially giving up that midfield. The shot clock violation, knowing that's coming, most teams will usually throw it to the corner or begin dropping their players if they know they're not going to get a look at net and redefending quickly by getting above the ball. So you can see the Engineers were already in their defending half for the most part, as RIT takes possession of the ball with a tie game and 6.30 remaining. Big names to look at here, Erickson and Clifford Gaston, the leading scorers for the Tigers, as coming in and attacking is Masral, the latest goal scorer, before French scored off the faceoff following his goal, but Masral is denied by Perry, who is up to 21 saves in net. Exceptional performance by Perry here. And I believe that might have been an offside by the engineers. Possession goes back to RIT. So another blown clear here by RPI, who are 12, excuse me, 16 of 23 on clears, compared with RIT's 19 of 20. So RIT doing a, a better job handling the ball, more responsible in their transition. And I believe that's been one of the big difference makers thus far. 5.34 remaining, tie game. RIT on attack. Driving the net and denied. Great defensive play there by Oswari, who was all over him. And now Stanek, all over the ball, kicks it to midfield. Oswari did an excellent job denying the RIT roll. And then a matchup on the short stick midi on goal and extended. That's Erickson firing in, picked off by Stanek. And it looked like a hit behind the play. So the RPI defense gets physical and hangs tough, creates a turnover. Under five minutes remaining in the game, Engineers with the ball and time to go on offense. 63 seconds to spare in their shot clock. Rafini elects to slow down pace of play and now he cranks up a dodge. Slide comes. Rafini kicks it behind Ogert. Excuse me, not Ogert, Luke Murphy behind the net. Now the ball is in the hands of Ogert. Cooper Roman, slicing and dicing. Low shot in, just wide of the net. Wormburner just kicked around Zebrowski. Uh, excuse me, Zebrowski got a piece of it, that's what I thought initially. So a fresh shot clock, 60 seconds for the engineers to work with as another low shot comes in and the engineers will retain possession despite an excellent diving effort from an RIT defender. So the engineers are not, not looking to slow down the pace of play and waste clock. They're trying to go, 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 get that early lead uh, with as much time as they can in this game, four minutes remaining and then continue defending. But heavy shot pressure from the engineers as we've seen all game long as the ball is in Tyler Ruffini's hands and out at the top of the zone. Ruffini pulls his defender out. That's a short stick midi Connor Finner, Connor Finner in back in the ball. Attacking in and a diving shot stopped by Zebrowski. That looked like it was Cooper Roman trying to get the low angle rip on net, but just lost his footing as he was releasing. And Zebrowski saw that one and able to make the stop. 
3.20 remaining, RIT with the ball. Had a feeling this game would come down to the wire with such evenly matched teams, Liberty League rivals, two acronym schools, and then of course the weather, which has made for some interesting conditions. And it's been a real treat this afternoon, so thanks for joining us. Three minutes remaining. Dishing off to Ian Dinga. Looking to roll from behind, the ever dangerous Clifford Gaston. Ball in, checked loose on the back of the net. Joe Perry picks it up. And RPI has possession, 2.46 remaining, tie game. Seems like the next person to take the lead might be the next person to win this game. As a long outlet pass, kicked ahead, and the engineers will go on attack. Ball rolled patiently to Sean Smith, who double checks the shot. Excuse me, the shot clock. Attacking in left-handed is Smith, who kicks the ball behind to the ever dangerous Eric Ogier. Metzella with the ball, kicks it high to Swanson. Engineers will all get a touch coming in. Smith, dodge, opens up space to his left. Shot, saves Zborowski. Looks like he got a little bit less on it than he wanted to from his left hand. Zborowski will see that one, but heavy pressure coming from the RPI ride, looking to disrupt those clear attempts that the Tigers are now 21 for 22 on. So great patience and ball handling by the Tigers in their clears. Do an excellent job taking care of that ball in transition. And here they come on offense. One minute and 30 seconds remaining. Big stop here needed for the engineers and a big goal potentially for RIT to take the lead in the waiting moments of the fourth quarter. Ranking up the dodge is Seth Grottenhall. Grottenhall rolls to his right. Elects to pass behind. Feed in is disrupted and picked off. Big time play by Jack Green, the long stick defender. Not only creates a turnover, picks up the loose ball, but then fends off a check. Engineers with the ball and another check at midfield. Loose ball and Stanek takes a hit while on the ground. No flag thrown. And the RPI sideline is erupting as Stanek was on his knees and took a hit while down. Engineers feeling that there should have been a call there. We're down to 40 seconds on our game clock. RIT wisely elects to call a timeout as they have the shot clock on their side and possession with 40 seconds remaining in a tie game. We'll be right back with you with an exciting finish to this one in Troy, New York. Welcome back as we enter the last 40 seconds of what's been an exciting back and forth contest between the RIT Tigers and the RPI Engineers as you would expect in a top five matchup and it has delivered on all your expectations. 40 seconds remaining, ball in RIT hands. They've just called a timeout and game plan for their strategy, assuming they're gonna hold and look for a late goal. They've got a fresh 70 seconds on their shot clock as the RPI Engineers looks to rally their defense from the sideline. Should we head to an overtime, those will be four minute periods and golden goal format, so the next goal would win. RIT obviously hoping to avoid that, while the engineers looking to make a big stop here and either turn their own fortune or head to an overtime frame. Here we go. RIT with the ball in their offensive end. Seems like with all the drama of the weather and the snow and everything today, this is the perfect ending to what's been an excellent game here on a Saturday afternoon in Troy. 
John Mazerall on the goal scoring sheet today. Cranks up a drive, pick coming. And rolling off of that is the ever dangerous Clifford Gatson. You gotta think they want the ball in Clifford Gaston's hands. As rolling in, one on own, he loses it. Engineers pick up the ball. Time expires and we are headed to overtime. It's been an evenly matched game. We've had lead changes back and forth. It feels a fitting ending for these incredibly even teams as we'll watch a couple of the a couple of the highlights in our last period there, some low angle goals by RIT. And then of course a snipe coming back against the green by Tyler Ruffini. So we will set the shot, excuse me, we'll set the clock to four minutes after we take a two minute break, reset, switch sides of the field, and we will have a next goal wins format in this thrilling matchup. We'll be right back. Welcome back, we are headed to overtime. It took more than four quarters to decide this one. Not surprising with the evenly matched groups we had out there. Number five RPI against number two RIT. Nine to nine is our score after regulation. Even stats across the board. RIT slightly out shooting the engineers 48-37. Enter Joe Perry with 22 saves in the contest. To Zeborowski's 14 in net for the Tigers. We're off with overtime action. It'll be first goal wins format. They put 15 minutes on the clock, excuse me. And I think they're looking to reset it. It will be four minutes on the clock. A little bit of a miscue there to our operation staff, but we'll get it all set up. So four minutes on the clock, teams have switched ends once again. So Joe Perry back in his starting net. Um, Alex Zeborowski back in his starting net, and we are ready to go for overtime. Venuto and French back at it again. Face off, controlled by Venuto. Big draw control as first goal wins, so first possession ever important. Seems fitting that we have March Madness here with snow coming down and Troy, an overtime game and a top five matchup with Liberty League points on the line. RIT's last loss in Liberty League play was here at RPI in 2022. Engineers looking to hand them another one in today's matchup. 3.30 remaining in the overtime, 51 seconds on the clock. RPI patient and surgical, making the most of this possession. Ruffini has to peel off, no daylight for him on the alley. Engineers getting some touches. You have to think the wind and the snow conditions starting to pick up and maybe affect some visibility. Joe Perry slightly more protected with ECAP Stadium at his back. Alex Zborowski a little bit more exposed to the elements. We'll see if that plays a factor in any of these shots on net. RPI patient, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Feed across, picked up by Luke Murphy, the man whose hands you want to have that ball. And he muscles into the, into the crease almost, but check and ball whacked out of bounds by an RIT stick. So RPI has eight seconds on the shot clock. You don't want to go a full possession overtime without getting a shot on net and making the most of your chances. So they'll look to attack here and they'll need to make quick work of it. Five seconds remaining on the shot clock. Ball kicked up high to Sean Smith. Smith laces one that goes wide of the net and therefore a shot clock violation gives RIT possession of the ball back. Tough first possession in, in overtime for the engineers. They'll look to redefend as you can see the defense dropping. And the Tigers should have an easy outlet into midfield. Running up the field and finding teammate is there, Caleb Commandant, full possession. And RIT establishes their offense. 
2.20 remaining in our first overtime as RIT now gets a crack at net with 58 seconds left. RPI defense will be tested with their greatest challenge yet, having stood tall in the first frame and holding RIT to one goal and only two goals in the last quarter. So trending in the right direction. Caden Brunson cranks up a dodge. He's defended by a long stick midi and Will McGrath. Gaston with the ball, rolling it on his right hand. A big save by Joe Perry. Gaston tried to sneak it under the stick of Perry, who goes into the splits and comes up with the stop in overtime. RPI ball, now the clear, so critical, an area they've struggled so far today. 18 of 26 on the exit attempts. RPI pushing, or excuse me, RIT pushing up above that midfield as the ball is down and they've lost sight of it. As a long stick defender, that looked to be Will McGrath. Lost visual on the ball, it was right at his feet, but snowy conditions making it a little bit challenging here. And a turnover by RPI, that ride by RIT once again eliminating an opportunity for RPI to go on offense. And that's the challenge of a, a stagnant attack, finding, trying to find those lanes behind the RIT wall and just closed on by defenders. And then obviously with the conditions, some, some slippery stick skills. So under a minute here, shot clock exceeds the game clock, so RIT and it's a loose ball, almost a turnover, and it is a turnover. That's Eli Kochstein with the ground ball and now with possession, cutting right through the heart of the RIT ride. Engineers need to gain half field. Kochstein pursued. Pass doesn't find Oswari, picked off by RIT. 25 seconds remaining. In transition, RIT with numbers, they attack. Saved by Joe Perry. Long outlet clear by Perry. Finds Luke Murphy, who controls the ball and a long check by the RIT team. 13 seconds. Can RPI go to goal? 10 seconds remaining in our first overtime. It's the next goal wins format. In on the crease. Pass goes in. And a goal! RPI wins it in overtime. The upset over number two, RIT. Eric Ogeron on the goal line. Two saves by Joe Perry in overtime. A long outlet clear to Luke Murphy. A feed to the crease and an Eric Ogeron roll. And what a game by the RPI engineers as they hand RIT their first loss of the season and move to 10-0. Perfect on the year, 2-0 in Liberty League matchups. Fans storming the field. What an effort by both teams today. Evenly matched, the difference being Joe Perry's 25 saves in net to help propel the RPI engineers to an upset victory in our thrilling top five matchup over the Tigers. Snow is falling in ECAV Stadium as the engineers celebrate. We'll take a look at the goal here right now. Rafini zips it into Ogert on the crease. Ogert falling away, what an effort. And just bobbled by Zebrowski as he's trying to find it. We wondered how potentially the elements of sight lines might affect it, but what an effort by the engineers to hang tough defensively after a difficult first offensive possession and they come away with the upset win Thank you all for joining us here at ECAF Stadium. I'm Tara Connolly signing off. The engineers are back in action. They take a two game road swing up to Ithaca College on March 30th. That's a one o'clock start. And then they're off to Clarkson on April 6th. Next home game here will be a massive Capital District rivalry game against current number eight, Union College. So we'll see you back here for more ranked action in a couple weeks as the engineers head out on the road. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great rest of your weekend.